Okay, we're in the desert. It's thousands of years ago, years before the suffragettes, eons before the women's rights movement, and way before the history of the traveling pantsuit. It's hot, it's dry, a bunch of drama has just gone down. Loose morals, idolatry, an angry god, 24,000 people dead of a holy plague. Pinchas, who this Parsha is named after, calms everyone down by flying into a totally holy rage and killing two lovers who may or may not have been doing something very inappropriate. With a spear. Through the both of them. Ready for some more drama? Zalafchad, one of the elders of the tribe of Menasha, has to go and die. We don't know why. The Torah introduces him, and then three lines later, he's kicking the bucket. Now, Homi has five daughters. Mala, Noah, Hogla, Milcha, and Tirzach. And would you believe it, not a one of them is married. For the gals, this does not bode well. Why? Well, because according to the laws of the time, women couldn't inherit property. When a man died, his property automatically went to his sons. No sons? The estate would go to his brothers or his parents, but not his daughters. Zalachad's daughters were virtuous. They were wise and powerful women. So what did they do? They went to the tent of meeting in front of all the chieftains and the whole congregation and petitioned Moses and Aaron's son, the priest Elazar, like, why should the name of our father be done away from among his family because he had no son? Give us a portion along with our father's brothers. They made a rock-solid case and reminded Moses and Elazar that their father died as a good man, not one of those fools who rebelled with Korah. What seems like an obvious case today had never been raised at the time, so this was huge. Moses sensed the enormity of the issue, so he went right to God and asked God what to do. God knows what's up. So God goes back to Moses and says, The plea of Zalafchad's daughters is just. You should give them an inheritance along with their uncles. In other words, God votes with the daughters of Zalafchad. Then God goes and takes it a step further and actually amends the laws of inheritance, the laws of the Torah, to take the women into account. God tells Moses that if a man dies without leaving sons, you must transfer his property to his daughters. What's totally awesome about the story of the daughters of Zalafchad is that even though they were on an unprecedented tip, before they said anything, no one in the entire million-plus person caravan of the children of Israel had ever said anything about this. But when the daughters of Zalafchad did, nobody questioned them. They went straight to Moses, and then Moses took their issue up with God directly. These women protested their unfair treatment, and as a result, the laws were changed for all people thereafter. Awesome. There was one stipulation. A few Torah portions later, some high-ranking men from the tribe of Menashe complained to Moses that if the daughters of Zalafchad marry husbands who are part of a different tribe, then their land, the land that's supposed to belong to the tribe of Menashe forever, would become part of that other tribe's property. Okay, that's not fair. So Moses decided that the daughters could marry whomever they wanted as long as they were part of the Menashe tribe. Yeah, it's a bit weird to tell the daughters that they have to marry their cousins, even if they might be 12th or 15th cousins, but they stood up for what they believed in, and they got it. Baby steps.